the weather in the park. I don't know. Um, so she was going to hold a, 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 a beetle or a moth, so like she was looking at nature, looking after nature. But actually, um, in the end, I left her not holding anything because, in a way, she's looking at herself, and that's you know she's looking at the power within herself. So that's about her strength. Um, and I feel that's also about femininity at the moment. Um, I feel like the next generation, so I'm getting quite old now, the next generation, like, they just get the women, they've just got such this power that we didn't have. I mean, you know, we stand on the, on the shoulders of giants and, you know, from the suffragette movement onwards, you know, amazing things have been happening. But I just feel, I suppose everybody thinks their time is the time, don't they? But I feel like the, the young generation, and I, I went to a gig the other day at, um, and went to see Self Esteem, and, and there was all these 20 year olds around me singing her music, knew all her words, and I was just like, you guys have got sports you know? <laughs> I mean, they, they're having a really tough time, aren't they? But yeah, from a phone, anyway, right, stop. <laughs> um, so there's that. And then there's the strength of the um, sculpture, and it it's sounds such a mad thing to say, but the kind of inner strength. And I think once you kind of got that sorted out, then you can kind of once you've got yourself sorted out, then you can go off and do lots of other things. Um, so a lot of the sculptures, it's about my narrative and my story. I do hope that once, um, that's the only thing that worries me about the poems and stuff like that, because really I want you to see, like this piece, Parfait Deum, which is about joy. I don't want you to see any inner struggle of mine going on. I just want you to have that as your sculpture, um, so that you don't see what I put into it, you see what you see, um, and you see yourself, and you don't see all my shit going on. <laughs> um, so the surface is quite rough and um, sometimes it looks like there's some leaves on the surface, especially recently, like with, these, with this one. This is quite a strong piece. This is an older piece that I wanted to show because of these funny little leaves. But um, I keep the surface really rough because I want it to be full of life. And um, I like the idea that this is a slight reference to nature. It's not direct, but could be made of leaves. And I also like the fact that it sort of can look like rock sometimes. Um, so the like clay is rock. Clay is just soft rock, really, and it's from the earth and it's grounds us and it's. So that's I really like that kind of um, idea. In some of the others, in another sculpture which I'm here, I wrote that. Um, we're as, we're as fragile as leaves, but gathered as we are now, we're as strong as the wind. So it's that feeling of strength, not only in oneself, but also um, with others around you. And it's kind of this empowerment that you can go off and do stuff and change stuff. And it doesn't have to be this way. Like this piece, it was, I can't even remember what it's called now. It's called There Is A Wrong Way. And it's just, we don't have to keep doing what we're doing going down this path, there's lots of other ways we can be clever, right, stop. Um, so I'll say the poem that I wrote, the piece of writing that I wrote with, in my hands. Um, in my hands. I have made her rock, not leaf. She is the land, but walking is human. And the land holds the beetle and the moth. I have made her rock, not leaf. And in her hands there is a key, and she sees the key and understands her strength. Um, I think this is an hour of time. What time did we start? Was it half? Oh, 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 oh. Half past, good. Um, so the other big thing you may have noticed is the bell. <laughs> and um, I remember, um, so I went to which after Long Road, I went to um, Winchester School of Art, got saved from Cambridge, so it was Miss <laughs> And my art teacher said, I think you ought to go to art college. And, and um, I'm in, anyway, got that sorted, went off to art college. 
and uh, slightly saved me basically. And um, I was, I did my figurative work, and I got kind of Giacometti, no, not Caro, Anthony Caro, kind of forced on me. So I did these steel sculptures, and um, struggled a bit with because I wanted to do my figurative stuff, and blah, 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 so I struggled with that stuff. And um, and then years later, we went to see an Anthony Caro exhibition, and he was talking, and he said. The thing is, it's um, it's about love. And I was thinking, that's so cool. It's all these steel sculptures that could look quite cold, he said, were about love. And anyway, so, so that's fun. Um, so this piece, I mean, there's loads of there's loads of sculptures about love. There's over there. There's um, there you are, which I sort sort of slightly taking the Mickey out of the uh, Welsh phrase because we. We live in between Hackney, we live in Hackney some of the time and in Hay on Y some of the time. We're trying to do half and half, um, which is brilliant and also quite challenging. Um, uh, so I made this in lockdown and it was the first, it's kind of my little saviour piece because um, I found it quite difficult and some everybody did. Um, I thought it was a bit useless making sculpture when I wasn't a nurse and I wasn't in the, you know, it's just really, really, um, I just felt really useless. Um, and I was speaking to a customer and they said, no, you need to carry on. And so anyway, I made this piece and um, it's kind of about how when kind of shit's going down and it's all awful and you're in the storm and it's just like, what the hell's going on? And, the day-to-day the, the, the -day still carries on, doesn't it? You still get up and you still brush your teeth, hopefully, <laughs> and you, um, that sort of thing. And, and so it's about noticing those, which I think possibly some of us had the time to, and some of us didn't, the daily things. And um, what, was, what was left was love. And um, obviously that's the most important thing. Um, so it was, um, it's called Love Remains, and um, it's not really a poem, but um, three months after the storm, a wildness, with, a wildness with no vision, there must come a stillness, a clearness, where you see not what is lost, but what is left. Um, and another theme is, um, in my work, is joy, because I want to make people happy. <laughs> just, I just, it's just such a, it's just so nice. Like people buy that sculpture, they put it in their garden and it makes them happy. And I think, what an amazing job. I mean, that's just so brilliant. Um, and, you know, it's, it's like, there's a lot of stuff to talk about. There's a lot of sculptures to make and everything like that, but it makes me really happy making really happy sculptures. And um, so, therefore, I do that as well. And so, how do I do it? So, I start off with life drawing. I do a lot of life drawing. I haven't actually, COVID kind of, I got a bit scared about life drawing um, through COVID. So, I haven't done loads in the last few years, um, partly because we couldn't. And then, when it all opened up, I was in London and I was just looking really good being in a really hot sweaty room with people that didn't want to do it. So I haven't done loads recently, I've really, really missed it. Um, I what happens in drawing is, I don't know whether anybody draws it, but it's that it just sort of settles your mind because you, both, you, you start drawing and then what happens to me is sometimes I think, oh, this is going to be a really good drawing, and then it breaks the drawing. So basically you've got to go in completely humble, completely honest and start drawing and, and just be looking and it's, I suppose it's very, very meditative. It's about just practicing and, and, and for me it's about learning and I think one of them says on there, I'm a learner. You know, lots of kind of big thoughts comes to me when I'm um, drawing, which are, are really like basic. Um, but I, I kind of like that because my brain gets quite fuzzled, so sometimes it's really nice to just have those very basic thoughts coming through. Um, and by basic, I mean sort of 
important, just um, straightforward. Um, yeah, so the 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 poem, um, well, bit of writing that I wrote called "I Have It Here" was written in the life class, a bit like this, with the you know sometimes I'm drawing and then there'll be a break and I quickly write things down and um, and I did that in the life class. The uh, uh, this, I wrote this down in the life class and then. I think the pieces in the wind in the archive over there, there's a piece called I Have It Here, and another large piece called Here. And um, it was, it was um, um, sometimes it's, uh, I have it here. Sometimes it's easy to focus on the have not rather than the have. It could be, possibly, should be rather than the have. I have enough stuff, I have time, I have life. I possibly could, possibly should have more, but I have some, I have enough. I look outside, over there, under here, but look, I have it here. Look, I have it here. Look, I have it here. That was me basically being way too ambitious and just like running around trying to do stuff. Um, so I do the drawing and then I... I do drawings to learn about um, anatomy and, and to get that feeling of um, quickness and liveliness. And then, um, and then I make it in clay. So I basically, um, so say if I was gonna make, um, if I was gonna make this piece, I would get a piece of steel underneath here and then I'd weld two bits up here and then I'd kind of do a little bit of welding here. And, um, and then I'd kind of, and I have kind of tools and stuff that like knives and um, I think you can sort of see it. Um, I, uh, yeah, here like knives and saws and all sorts of stuff. But, but basically, it's just bumming the clay on until I like how it looks. And then what I'll do is um, I'll, I will either give that to the foundry or I make a mould. So a mould is, is, I don't know how many people know about um, mould making, but I'll, do, I'll keep it brief because it goes on a bit. So basically, this is rubber, this is silicon rubber, it comes in a liquid form and it's, it's um, and I would paint it all over there, in a, I'd paint it, and then I'd put some catalyst to make it thicker, some um, thickening stuff, make it thicker, and then I'd make it so it, it kind of went up to about that thickness. So you divide the sculpture in half using flash, um, anyway, you divide the sculpture in half, you put rubber all over it, and then it, the sculpture comes in two halves, and then the, I don't know how to explain it. Um, so this little, this is a mold for this little, sculpture here. Um, so I've covered it in rubber and then I've split it in half. So if you think that, so you've got two bits of rubber like that that go on and then this is a really crap mould but um, other people make much better moulds than this. This hard jacket keeps this very fluid um, rubber in place so that it always looks exactly the same. A very famous um, actor for one of my sculptures um, at an exhibition and said, well, that one's not the same as that one. And I was like, well, it is. <laughs> and he's like, no, it's got a different face. And I was like, mm, it really not. <laughs> 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 I know, he was a film director, wasn't he? Yeah. Obviously, I can't remember his name, so that's great. Um, probably best. Um, so yeah, so this is how you make the the mould. So if I was going to pour, I was, I was going to make this into a resin. I would then just pour. I put it together. I paint it in bronze resin. Then I pour, put it together, and then I pour it through these holes, fill it up, take it apart. Um, there'd be a flash line, which is where the two sides meet, and I grind that off, make that all nice, job done. 
If I was going to make a bronze, this is why the bronze is so much more expensive, I'd make a wax first, so I'd paint in a layer of wax, then I'd heat up the wax, pour it in there, this is what all this is, this, this um, stuff in here. And then I'd make a, a wax, that's the wax. So what happens is that the foundry, with these big pieces, the foundry make a wax, I go to the, I go to the foundry, check that it still looks how it's supposed to, because with the really big pieces, they get chopped up into sections. Um, the wax then gets, so then I say that's okay, go ahead. Then the wax gets covered in a thing called ceramic shell, which is like a plaster. That then gets put in a furnace, all the wax melts out. So if this is the ceramic shell, they basically put it in, all the wax will melt out of here. So you end up with this empty shell, then which is just plaster with the um, imprint of the figure on the inside. Then you'd, in a furnace, you heat up the bronze, pour it into there, um, it cools straight away, and then you chip it off, and then you come out with a, a little bronze like this. Um, it's probably got flash lines, or you've chopped it up and you have to weld it back together. So if you think about, like, quite a lot of my pieces are, like, really, really tall, like, monumental, they, they're into lots of little bits, weld them all together, I go back to the foundry, check that they haven't totally fucked it up. <laughs> and, um, no, they are really good. And um, then they, so they put that all together, and then they, so it looks, there's a shiny bit there, it kind of comes out a very light bronze colour. And then they patinate it by making it dark brown, and my stuff is always dark brown, it's really boring, but it's just a colour that, or grey, sometimes it's grey, um, and then that's it for the bronze. But that's why the bronze is so, it's not really the bronze that's that expensive, it's just the process is so, I mean it's like a, it's such an old process, um, but it's just really, really um, complicated. So that's how I do it, and then I was going to say like where do you put sculpture? And for me, I'm not really, um, you know, it just, it's like where would you put a, um, a vase of flowers? You just put them on the table. You don't need to make a massive thing about where you would put them. You just put them on the floor. Not on the floor, I don't think. <laughs> um, but you put them on the table, you put them on the mantelpiece, you put inside, you know, you put them on anywhere. I went to, um, I've been ages, haven't I? Hmm. What time? Yeah. Hmm. Okay. okay. Um, I'm nearly done. Sorry. Do you quite like talking? Sorry. Um, and um, I went to a. Uh, I don't know whether I can say his name because, anyway, someone very close to here who, uh, they'll know, um, who used to run a vineyard. And um, anyway, I went to his house for the first time. I was having an exhibition in there. And, um, and there was a Giacometti just on the kitchen table. Just walking down the middle of the kitchen table. I was just like, well, that's how you do it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's not really, it's, it, it, they're expensive, but they're not precious. They should be part of your everyday life. And um, so just kind of quickly saying about the guard, you know, like if you're putting it in a garden, so that's in the house where you put a vase of flowers. In the garden, I think there's in the film Dirty Dancing, nobody puts baby in the garden. <laughs> you can put them in the corner, but like with that one, it's like when you when you have a it's like a sculpture is like I would say this a sculpture is like having twenty paintings. So like why would you put it in the corner? Because you're missing all the other sides. So you're only getting five paintings for your money. Whereas if you bring it out, I mean, not everybody can do this in every house, but in a garden, you can quite often. So, you'd like, you could, um, if you've got a small garden, you can put it in front of the window um, when you're looking out into the garden, and then so you can see it from the garden, and then you can also see it from the house. And then, or if you've got a bigger garden in between rooms in the garden or leading you into other places, it's really nice if you've got a view from your garden. Or even to suggest a view that um, that the sculpture sort of look out to the view sometimes because I think you empathise with the sculpture and um, therefore you know like in the winter 
um, if the sculptures in the garden can see the see the, like the sculpture having loads of fun in the garden, and you're like, oh, it's nice to outside, and or they're looking out to the view, takes you out. It's, it it sort of animates the space within the garden. Um, there's a bit I put on Instagram the other day. Um, sculptures in summer are happy to play in the borders with the tall flowers. They're good value. They're up late and party all winter when everybody else has gone to ground. <laughs> <laughs> um, because in a border, you know, in summer, if you put a sculpture in a border, like on, an, on, like on one of these oak plinths, they stand and, and it's really nice to have all the flowers in them. Um, and then in the winter, they become the main sort of feature. Um, when you have lovely flowers. Um, so the last piece I wanted to talk about was um, reflected, which is, I'm going to go and get because um, it's, um, so this piece was like the genesis of a whole new body of work, as I did what I said earlier, we moved to London, which um, I don't find massively easy actually, I'm sort of a country bumpkin really, um, and I think I should been in London, um, but I don't really like it. <laughs> um, but I do sort of really like it because it's like culturally, um, it just keeps me awake. You know, it's just it's really nice. Because otherwise, I'd just be looking at flowers all the time. <laughs> just going, ooh, it's a really nice flower. Um, so this piece, um, I'd been having a bit of, um, uh, I'd been having a down basically, and. Um, a really big down <laughs> and I did this um so I went in the studio and I was like oh, really <laughs> really Jurassic way and I was like we've got this massive piece like really arty this massive piece of paper out I just drew this circle in charcoal and like drawing the circle in completely mental and I put this little figure at the bottom of it that's really so depressed. <laughs> and, um, and then I kind of saw myself in the circle and 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 I just went, well that's me. That's who I am. And that's it's it's fun, it's cool, whatever. You know, there's you you can only be who you can be, can't you? You can't be anybody else. You know, you've got to be the better version of you or the I don't know, some so I do I'm I'm very I take on board criticism. I don't know. Yeah. So um, uh, it's a bit up and down in my studio. <laughs> it's a bit up and down. -y. We went. We went on a um, cycling holiday. This is a massive stuff. We we're on a cycling holiday um, in Laos, and, it's, and, and it hit the, our guy <coughs> would say every day we're like, oh god, we can't cycle anymore. And every day he'd go. Today, <laughs> <laughs> like one day we just went uphill all day. Um, anyway, so it's, that's what's like in my studio. But it, there's a lot of joy as well. I'll just say that. Um, so uh, there's a really depressed. It's not depressing, but I literally can't say it without crying. So there's a poem that follows this, and on the train on the way up, I couldn't say it without crying. I have chopped it off. I'm afraid. Um, you don't want to hear it. We well, don't want to hear me saying it, so I'll just say the interlude to the poem. Um, confidence is a tightrope. You can't always tell what's going to knock you off. Oh, I, oh, I forgot to say that. Um, so after the drawing, the miserable drawing, um, I started making this sculpture, and I feel like it was like the genesis of a lot of the work in here, and also me going forward, not really caring what everybody else thought, because I think I've always been like a bit scared of critics of um, like my tutors from college, not from long range because they're all lovely, but um, from Winchester School of Art because they didn't really like my finished work, anybody's finished work, even though they invited me back to teach. But that's <laughs> that. um, and. Um, so I felt like this was like the genesis of the, the piece reflected. Um, I have it here, there you are, and then the come along girl. So I suddenly felt sort of a freedom that I could just do what I want. Nobody's, who cares, you know? Once you, 
and not from back to press, but you know, you, got, you kind of get a sort of clarity when you just go, like really, it doesn't matter. Um, so, um, yeah, blah. Um, confidence is a tightrope. You, you can't always tell what's going to knock you off. In the noise of everything, caring about what I was missing, only seeing what I was lacking, harassing my own femininity, my own passion, my own sensibilities, seeing my fragilities and passion as a negative thing, and constantly slagging me off. I miss the thing that I am. And in the sculpture, I've been true to who I am. Of course, I always am. But this time, not cringing at my straightforwardness, my humanity. In darkness comes clarity, and I can see my sensibilities, my passion, and I enjoy every minute. I can't wait for the next and the next. And I think we're going to be really good. <laughs> There's a lightness. Leaves dance on the surface, making form. Everything goes in. Stories drift over and through the work. Sometimes they stick, sometimes they move away. In the moving clay, a narrative evolves. And after me, there is you. And ultimately, it's your sculpture, your narrative, your love that you see. And, um, and that's it. And if you want to hear me saying the other poem, I'll, the other bit of the poem, um, I'll send it for a link. I'll put it on the thing. It's really, it's not that I do. I won't be able to say it. I've never been able to say it without pride. So, I've made it through without pride. <laughs> Thank you.